Hi guys, it's Professor Fernandez again, and I am here to help you do your Works Cited page. So the Works Cited page, it seems like it's a difficult thing for students to kind of wrap their minds around, but it's really not that difficult. If you've been doing your research log, you pretty much have a lot of what you need to do the Works Cited page. So whether you're doing your compare and contrast essay or you're doing your final essay or you're happy to be doing your annotated bib or if you happen to be in any of my 1301s, you have to do a work cited page for whatever essay you're doing. I'm going to show you how to do the essay or how to do the work cited and where it should go in the essay and how it should look and all the nice stuff. So a couple of things you need to know before we get started. I am using Word. You can do the same thing in Google Docs, except that you are going to be using Google Docs, right? Um, so it's the same rules. You just have to use them on, on Google Docs if you're using them. Um, so definitely look for the Google Doc equivalent to that. So if you're using anything else other than Word and Google Docs, I don't know how to help you, but Google is real and so is YouTube. Um, if there's anything else that I don't know, maybe you're using an old version of like an old Word, Word, what's that other one? Word processing thing that's like from the 90s and you just think it's the bee's knees, bless your heart. Um, email me. <laughs> Other than that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a screen share and I'm going to share a couple of things. I'm going to share where I'm going to do the work cited. I'm going to share a former student's um, um, research log <laughs> so you know what's going on. Um, I'm going to also share I think the original um, source to something. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start screen sharing. I'm going to use Word. Take notes. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go here and I'm going to go to Word. Now, um, it looks like a blank page, right? No, it's not. There is the tail end of a paper here. This is a former student's paper. Um, so, but I'm not going to show you too much because I don't want you to take their words and stuff, but I do want you to see that we're at the end of an essay. Now, there's a couple of things that I am going to suggest. Um, whether you are doing um, a research paper, like a 10 page, 15 page research paper for an honors project, or you're doing um, something for 1301, or you're doing something for history or whatever subject, I personally would do the work cited page first. Um, if you're not doing a research log, um, in a research log, let me show you what that looks like, if I can, if it allows me to. It does not. Okay. So what I'm going to do is reshare here if I can. Um, you share. It's going to look something like this. That is what a research log looks like. Again, this is a former student's research log um, and they just PDF something that was on Excel, okay? So if you're not using a research log, which literally allows you to log every, um, every source you're using for a research project, so that way you're able to keep up with a bunch of sources at the same time. So if you're not using a research log, definitely, um, definitely I would write the work cited page first. And let me tell you why you should write it first, because it's always the thing that students mess up on. <laughs> it's always the one they always mess up um, because they're writing it last. By that time, they've been stressing about this paper. Um, they've been trying to do the in-text citation, worrying about grammar, worrying about structure. And so like the last thing they're thinking about is trying to do this correctly, okay? So I would do the work cited first. It's easier to do that and then understand how you're gonna cite inside of your paper with in-text citation, knowing what the work cited is gonna look like. Now, what is in-text citation? In-text citation shows the reader where you got the information that you are citing. 
So instead of putting the entire citation next to the information, you're doing like a short code. It's that thing that goes inside of, inside the parentheses. The in-text citations and the work cited work together. They talk together to tell the reader what's going on. So essentially, anybody who reads your paper, whether it's me or anybody in the English department or the history department or your future children or your current children can, who happen to know MLA, can read it and, sit and look at the citation next to the work that you're citing and say, oh, this is from this source. Go back to the work cited that's at the end of your paper, say, oh, this is where this source is, Go look for the source and then look exactly look at exactly what you were looking at. So essentially, it's really shorthand. They're both talking to each other. You can't have one without the other, which is why I say do the work cited first, whatever you do. But since you're not going to listen to me, you're going to do it at the end. I'm going to show you how to do it at the end. Okay, so we're at the end, right? This is the last part. See where this cursor is? It's right here after the last paragraph and what you're going to do is that you're going to hit insert in from the menu and you're going to hit page break there you go now i want you to see what i did not do i did not hit return 50 11 million times to go to the next page the reason why you don't do that is that what you're doing is adding additional spaces here right you see how when i click here it doesn't really add additional spaces, even though I don't know why there's spaces here. But there's not any additional spaces here, right? So when you go and say you go to like uh, turn this in in Word, right? If you're turning it on D12, or if you happen to not be in my class at all, and you happen to use Brightspace or Canvas, um, it's going to just mess up your formatting here. And it's going to turn whatever is on page five and put it on page four or even in the middle of page four. So that's why you want to hit page break here. So that way it says, hey, this is going to be an entirely different page. It's not going to be on the same page as the rest of my essay. Got it? Fantastic. Now, here is another thing that you need to know. The title of your work cited is called works cited. You see how there's an S after the word works and you see how the W and the C are capitalized. That's what it looks like. Now, from here, let's hit home. You're just gonna center this and then leave it alone. You're not gonna bold it. You're not gonna underline it. You're not going to make it 20 point font. You're just going to keep it at the same font as the rest of your essay. This essay is 11 point font. It's supposed to be 12 point font, right? Times New Roman 12 point, which is what, excuse me, what uh, MLA is actually. Um, I'm not going to count off for, for it being like one point off, right? Um, it's got to match the rest of the essay. So if the rest of the essay is Times New Roman 12, then your work cited is Times New Roman 12. If it is Arial 12, then your work cited is going to be Arial 12. Your work cited is not any different than the rest of your paper. Work cited is part of your paper. Think of it as your new conclusion paragraph, right? Right. Okay. So here we are with the work cited, the title. You're going to hit return, and then you're going to go all the way to the left, right? And hit return one more time. So there should be like two, there should be a space here between your first thing and the, and, the, and, the, and the title. Now, here's the fun part, doing your MLA citations. Here's some things you want to keep in mind when you're doing these citations. You want to put them in alphabetical order. Um, so if you have in your MLA citation, the name of the author or the last name of the author, right? It goes by the last name of the author. If you have a citation that does not have an author's name at all, and it starts with the title, it's the first letter of the title. So for example, if I have something that is from John Smith here, 
right? And say, we just keep going and this is the citation. And then I have another citation um, that says a little lamb from Mary, right? That's the title. It doesn't have the name of the, of the writer. It, there's no name there. So we have to start with the title. That means A goes before S. That means this goes before this. There you go, right? But we don't have any of those right now. I'm gonna go through at least one citation with you. So this paper happens to be the compare and contrast essay for my 1301, where you've got to compare two witnesses in the Adnan Syed case, Asia McLean and Jay Wiles. Now, you may be doing this for another class. This does not negate what you're going to do. I just wanted to give you context because context, as 1302 knows, is everything. Okay, let's get started. We know that we are going to cite something that is on our on our um, research log. So we're gonna look at what's on our research log and we want to cite this particular article, exclusive, J, key witness from Serial, tells his story for the first time, part one. We know that it's written by Natasha Vargas Cooper. We know that it was published here. The next page where it has all the links, right? Something funky happens when you create a PDF from Excel. It is what it is. There's nothing we can do about that. We know that here is the actual link to where we're gonna go. And then that's all the information that we have, right? So we know that where we can start and where we can go get the additional information that we need. In addition, we have this wonderful MLA citation worksheet that you guys have access to. If you don't have access to this because you're not in any of my classes, so sorry for you. I'm pretty sure that the MLA website has something for you. In fact, I know it does. My particular classes, we have access to this, so we're gonna use this. And this tells us where things go and whether they need to be in quotation marks or in italics. It tells us when we need to do additions, when we need to do commas versus periods. It's fantastic. So we're going to start here. And we know that the first thing that we need is the author's last name and first name. And we already have that in our, um, in our research log. Why? Because Ms. Fernandez is smart. So we know that the, the name of this source or the author of this source is Natasha Vargas Cooper. Vargas Cooper is the last name. It's hyphenated, right? So B for Vargas, right? Not quite for Vendetta, but for Vargas. So let's go ahead and go to, back to Word and start here. Vargas. Cooper, I believe her name is Natasha, period, right? Because that's what our MLA workshop tells, our worksheet tells us, that there's a period at the end of the author's first name, right? Here's an interesting fact about MLA uh, citations. You only do last name, first name for the first person listed in a citation. Everybody else is regular. Do not ask me why, no one consulted me on why it's like that, it's just a quirk, right? So we have Marcus, comma, Cooper, Natasha. So let's go back to our MLA works cited um, worksheet and we look at what's next. It's the title of the source. So the title of the source, of course, is the name of the article that we're citing and it's going to be in quotations. It's not quite an article or a chapter, but it's actually like part of a bigger thing um, because we have our container coming up here. So it is going to be in quotations and we're gonna look back at our research log. I'm literally going to cut and paste this because I can. <laughs> and, you, and this is 
also a, like a wonderful thing of why you have a research log because you can cut and paste so many wonderful things and don't have to do um, a lot of things. Okay, let's go back here. And we know that we're gonna put this, I'm gonna put this as unformatted text. This is another little trick. So every document has this different format, but if you do a paste special and hit unformatted text, it will format it regularly to your document. So I know that this is gonna go in quotations, right? And I also know that this is gonna be a single quotation. Why? Because every time you have something, quotations inside of a quotation, the quotation marks inside of the bigger quotation marks are always gonna be single. Just a little, just a little hint. Now, we know that there's a period that goes here. I believe it goes outside, but we're gonna double check with our um, wonderful MLA worksheet. And let's see here. Emily worksheet says it goes right inside. So we're wrong, right? I'm wrong. So I've got to go back and fix it. So I'll go back and fix it. And so before you fix it, I want to see a couple of things. I know I need the title of the container. The title of the container is the name where the thing actually happens to be, right? For example, this happens to be in on a website called The Intercept. Um, and we're gonna make sure that this is, this is in italics and make sure that there is a comma right after that, okay? So let's go back. We know that we're gonna put, we're gonna go back and fix the period. It goes inside of the quotation marks. And we know that the name of the wonderful or uh, the wonderful publication, The Intercept, um, goes in italics with the comma going after. So let's go back. Oh, lots of sharing here. What is this? Okay, it goes inside. All right. Have to remember. Okay, so this goes inside. And so we know that it, we're going to space that, hit a space bar. We're not going to put it right, bump, bump it right next to. Um, the quotation marks there, not at all. We're gonna hit a space and it's called the intercept. Now, here's a weird thing. The intercept's name actually has an uh, uh, underscore right after it. That is actually part of the name. However, if you just do the intercept, I'm not gonna count off for it because you probably didn't notice that and I'm not gonna give you points off for that, but that's pretty much what the name is. So it's weird, it just is. I'm gonna hit the italics. Why? Because our handy dandy worksheet tells us it's in italics. So the intercept in italics, great. So far, so good, right? You've got everything. Now here is where um, we have to go a little bit off. Um, the the research log, right? Because the research log only gives us enough to let us know this is a source that we're, we're possibly using, why we're gonna be possibly using, how we got there using our keyword searches, when it was published, who wrote it and the name of it. But it doesn't tell us much more than that. Everything else means that we're gonna have to go back to the original source. So I wanna go back to the MLA worksheet to make sure um, to see what we need to get. And then we're gonna to go to the original work. So we're gonna see if there's any other contributors and pretty much anybody else who helped write this or create this thing. If there's any additions or numbers like any like seasons or episodes, usually there's not when it comes to online articles. They usually are when it comes to things like um, citing um, maybe, uh, maybe an episode of Serial or citing something else. Um, but usually there isn't, but we're gonna keep an eye out for versions or numbers and other contributors. And we're gonna look at publisher. And I'm looking to see how things are written, right? So under here, it says other contributors. You can write, um, say if there's another contributor, somebody else who added or who, who wrote, helped write this piece other than Natasha Vargas Cooper, 
then we are going to write edited by something or couldn't or um, whatever they did if it's edited or if it's illustrated or whatever it is we're going to go ahead and write illustrated by edited by whatever the job title is and then write their first name and last name remember when i said that MLA had this interesting quirk with like first name, last names. So see how this works. The first person mentioned is last name, first name, and then everyone else is first name, last name. Now, here's an aside. If we're, if, so let's say we started with a title, right? And we mentioned no names, but we do have an editor. Then we would go last name, first name. Again, not a not a quirk that I created. This is MLA, um, so go take it up with them. <laughs> okay, so we are looking again. We've already had the title of container, which is the intercept with the weird dash or the weird underscore after the name. We're gonna look for when we go to the website. We're gonna look for any other contributors. We're gonna see if there's version or a number of anything, any additions, seasons, volume numbers. More than likely, there aren't. Um, but we're going to look to see, make sure that they're not there. And then we're going to try to find a publisher. Now, usually for periodicals, the publisher's name is identical to the periodical. For example, the New York Times is published by the New York Times Company. The Washington Post is published by the Washington Post Company. Um, so sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. <laughs> so, Baltimore Sun is published by the Baltimore Sun Company. Um, I don't know if the Boston Globe is still published by the New York Times. I don't know if they sold that publication, but the Boston Globe is published by the New York Times Company. So that sometimes you have to look to see who published and I'll show you where to find that. All right, so let's go here. I hope I haven't lost you. Let's go to the original publication. Ooh, the original publication here. And so this is the original. I want you to see see how there's an underscore here for the intercept. This is how they spell their name. So we have to honor that. So we have all this wonderful stuff and we are looking for any volume additions and any additional contr uh, contributors. And we're also looking for the publisher. So I'm gonna scroll down and lots of big good stuff interviews also lots of comments by the way no other reasons other than sometimes comments are interesting to read okay so matt tinko provided research for this interview you could put research by matt tinko it's usually not a common practice to put that, but if you were to add that there, I would not be mad about it. I'm not going to add it because it's usually not something that's added, um, but you could. Okay, so let's see. Who is the publisher here? It's First Look Media, it looks like, because it's copyrighted by this organization here. If you don't see that, you can always hit the about page and look to see who um, who is the organization. And we can say it's First Look Media Works, which is a nonprofit organization. Okay, so, and we don't have a co or First Look Media Works company. Okay, so we just look, so our company's name is First Look Media Works. All right, so. I did not see an addition. I did not see a volume. So what we're gonna do is that we are going to go back to this worksheet, which is super handy. And I even use it to this day, even though I teach this, I use it all the time. So we don't really have any contributors unless you wanted to add Matt Tinko who helped with the research. So researched by Matt Tinko, if you would like. Usually it's not something you put, put there, but you can put it there if you'd like. I'm not gonna count off if you do it or don't do it. It's perfectly fine. We did not see uh, an addition for, for anything. We did not see a volume number or anything. So we're gonna leave these blank. So that means the next thing we're gonna put on our citation is the publisher, which is First Look Media. 
Um, we also saw that there was a publication date and we can go back and look at that publication date. And we also see that there is a location. So there is a location um, and location can take various forms. It could be page numbers if you're looking, say, on something on the databases on, um, and it's part of a journal. So page number, if it's one page, um, you're going to hit P period. If it's several pages, you're going to do two P's period and give the page numbers, the page ranges. You can also do a permanent link or a DOI. I prefer a DOI if you're dealing with the databases because I can get back to something in the databases a lot quicker with a DOI. Um, if you are doing a link, you want, uh, say, from something online, say like this Intercept article, you're going to want to do perm uh, just a regular link that's right up here. Um, that's right up here, and we'll see it here in a minute. Um, on the on the address bar, and you're going to take out the HTTP. So here's what that all is going to look like. We're going to put the publisher's name, the publication date, and the location. So I'm going to go back here to the actual source. And I'm just going to write it down because, you know, or actually, I'm going to copy this. So that way it goes in. And I'm going to go back. And we were looking for publication date. Ooh, so much, so much to read. And the publication date is 29 December 2014. Um, and then um, we have the link, which is here. You're probably wondering about this time element here. Um, should you put this time element? Um, I would not unless there was something here that said that there's another version, like the original version was published at 1 p.m. versus 2.55, right? And so you want to make sure that the version is the 2.55 p.m. version. Um, and so that counts as like a version number, right? Um, but we don't have that. Yay, no complications. I like things with no, that are not complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we know that, let me write down this date so that I know what I'm doing. Um, we know that we are going to put, uh, no, we're going to go back to Word. And we know that the next thing is, Ah, did that wrong, sorry. Paste special unformatted text puts it in the correct format. So that way you don't have to copy, redo the font size and the font, right? So that's a quick way of doing it. We know it's first look media works. We also know that the date is 29 December 2014. And we're going to go through this date and why this date is really weird. And then we have this link here. So I'm going to go here and just copy this link right quick. You may not see anything. You might not see me doing it, but I just want to move on fairly quickly here and do this link. And we know that we're going to take off the HTTP. And we're just going to do that. Now, you're probably wondering where are the commas and where does everything go like that, the commas and the periods. We're going to go back and look at our favorite document here, and it's going to tell us what to do. Okay, so what we know is we did the title of the container, there's a comma after that, right? So we got to make sure that after we write the intercept that there's a comma. And then there were no contributors, no versions, no numbers. We didn't have to do that. There was a publisher, so there's another comma after the publisher. There's a publication date, and the publication date is not how you would write it normally. We're bad global citizens sometimes. The rest of the globe writes it day, month, year. We don't do that. We usually do month, day, year. So. We're going to do it um, how the rest of the globe does it. So day, the month, and the month is always abbreviated. 
unless it's already a short month like May, and then do the year. After that, we're going to put a comma. And then um, after the location, we'll put a period. So let's go back and incorporate those changes. Okay, so we know first look media, there has to be a comma there, right? It's not in italics, it's just there. Oh, and we know that there's a comma right after the intercept. I would not put it in italics though. How about that? There you go. And put a space in between things, right? This is like a sentence. You wanna put a space in between things. There's a space right after the date and a period at the end of that long run out of a sentence. Here is your citation. Done. Everything looks good. Um, so we have last name, first name, period, the name of the actual article that we're writing or that we're reading, and we have the period in the right spot. We have the name of the publication, even the underscore for the intercept. We have a comma. We have who their publisher is. Uh, we have when this was written, and we have the actual location. Now, I don't mind if you highlight the actual um, address here and insert, see if I can see it here, the link. to the actual thing. So now you have the link here, right? So we have our first citation. This is what we actually are doing here. Um, so yay. So you're probably wondering how do you get it to where it looks like how it's supposed to, right? Um, because as it is right now, it is technically wrong. What makes it wrong is that it's not formatted correctly. So what you wanna do is that you wanna write, how I would do this is how I would write all of your citations, just write them all like this, right? Let's copy this so you can see what I'm talking about. I would write all your citations. Let's just say you're here and you're doing all your citations, right? You've got all your citations. And let's just say all of these are different citations. I'm just doing this so you can see what I'm about to show you. So you're done with all your citations. They're all there, they're all in blocks this block type of thing. You're not going to number them. You're not gonna put bullet points to them. You're just gonna leave them like this. And then you're gonna highlight this and you're going to right click. And after you right click, you're gonna hit this thing called paragraph. And this wonderful dialogue box comes up. You're gonna look for something called line spacing, which is right here. And you see where it says single? You don't want that. You wanna click on this and, actually, no, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. You're gonna hit, you're gonna look for something called special. Um, and you're gonna click on this where it says none. And what you're gonna do is hit the word hanging. What hanging does is that it creates a hanging indent. What a hanging indentation is, is the exact opposite of what you do for writing your paragraphs. When you write a paragraph, you indent the first line and then everything subsequent in that paragraph is aligned to the left. And then you start a new paragraph, you indent that paragraph and you keep going, then you're down to the races. What a hanging indent does is that it does things the other way, right? The first line is all the way to the left and then the subsequent lines in your wonderful um, works cited page is indented five spaces in as per MLA. Now you see how there's a lot of space here. You just want to make sure that it's like that. There should be like one line in between your title and your works cited. So that's what your works cited page would look like. Yay! Excitement. Yes. Um, and you so again, your works cited page is attached to the end of your essay, right? It's attached to the end of your essay. And you wanna make sure that it's up towards the top, right? You don't wanna be in the middle. So I just put it up on top of here. 
you want to do a page break. Again, you do not want to hit return after you're done with this essay and hit return or worse, the space bar until you get to the next page. It's not what you want to do because when you turn it in, it, all the formatting will be funky and I'm actually grading formatting. So you don't want to do that. You want to hit page break. So you're going to go to insert page break here and then you're going to write works cited, works with an S because it's plural. Um, cited in the same font and the same size as the rest of your paper and you will leave it alone you will not make it bigger you will not fold it you will not underline it you will not put it in some sans serif fonts because you think it's fun please do not do that please do not do that you'll hit return it looks like once twice three times looks like two times you'll hit return twice uh two times and you'll start here You'll write all of your um, wonderful citations using, of course, probably the MLA worksheet, which is a piece balls. And then after you're done, you'll highlight everything and you will do a hanging indent. So let me show you the hanging indent one more time because I want to make sure it's clear. Let's say, let me undo this so we can do this again. <laughs> okay. Say you are done. Oh. Say that you are done with. Let me go back here. Okay. Say you are done with your work cited. You're just going to write them all in a block. You can keep them as um, single spaced if you want, or you can do double spaced. I personally don't mind either way. I prefer them almost single spaced, but double space you can do. It's perfectly fine. Um, and you have all your citations there. It's just a lot easier to get them all done. And then you're going to highlight them, hit paragraph, go to special under the word indentation, right? And where it says special, there will probably see something that says none. You're going to click on that and hit hanging. Now, if you want to go and do this double space, you can. You just go to line spaces, line spacing, and hit double. Hit OK. And here you have your citations. Ah, brilliant. And that's how you do a works cited page. I'm sorry if this video is really long. I didn't mean for it to be long, but I wanted to make sure that you understood how to do this. Um, because once you know how to do it, you can do it for any class and it pretty much any format. So if you have to do APA or have to do Chicago style or you have to do um, MLA like we're doing now, you know how to do a bibliography page or a works cited page. Um, it is part of the file. Do not turn it in separate because then it doesn't exist. So turn it in together. That means you'll go at to the end of your essay and you will hit um, page break and do the wonderful thing. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I hope that was helpful, um, especially when we did the work cited um, and we did the citation. And with that, I am done. <laughs> Bye, guys.